split personality slices up twice the scares and twice the deceit. Directed by Joel Silver, written by Fred Decker, and shot by Jan DeBont. Based on a story from the Vault of Horror number 30, drawn by Johnny Craig. You'll be seeing double in this crypt with two sets of terrifying twins. Edwin King is a swindler, pretending to represent a fake charity, and has people send him donations over the phone. He also goes door to door, wringing out every last dollar he possibly can from the gullible. He knocks on one door in a wealthy neighborhood, but there's no answer. As he continues on his way, the friendly mailman tells Ed that the Blair sisters never answer their door for anyone, and they never come out. They're just two wealthy hermits. Ed laments that there is a vast fortune on the other side of that house's door that he can't get to. But his luck is about to change. A beautiful woman is leaning out the top floor window. She must be one of the Blair sisters, and she's trying to coax a cat stuck on a tree to come back inside the house. Seizing his opportunity, Ed proclaims he will climb the tree and rescue her cat. Three years before playing in Martin Scorsese's casino, Joe Pesci tries his luck in the Crypt Keepers as Vic, who seems to help out a weary gambler. You make blackjack on the next card, the house pays five to one, you're rich, Ace. That's if it gives me a two. A hundred says it is. You got more to lose. Oh, what the hell? Give me a two. After the winnings are dealt, Vic tells Don how the number two has always been lucky for him, before taking his prey for one of the oldest flimflams in the book. I got an inside line on a no-risk, tax-free, limited partnership investment. Guaranteed to double our money. Minimum ten grand. You keep that cash. Write me a personal check now. Give me your address and your phone number. Inside two weeks, we're sitting pretty. Your boy gets his operation, we call it two friends doing each other a favor. What do you say, Dan? Don. Even the dealer was in on it. Later, driving on about his day, Vic blows out a tire, swerving out of the way of two black cats. Good luck, for sure. Vic makes his way onto a nearby, luxurious property. What the fuck is this piece of shit? He enters through the unlocked door and makes himself to look more banged up than he actually is. The owner holds a gun on him, but Vic claims he just wants to use the phone. The owner's twin sister comes out. Vic is introduced to April and June, the Blair sisters. He picks up the phone and impresses the two with his knowledge of their architect father. Really have a beautiful home here. In fact, next to the Case Observatory up in Old Valley, I think that this house might be Blair's greatest architectural achievement. German expressionist influence, 50s futurism. You knew who our father was? Are you kidding? The man was a genius. Amy and Susan Blair debate whether to let Ed inside their home. They decide to make an exception for their feline's rescuer. The three sit down for tea, and over the course of the next hours, Ed tells them countless stories of his heroic adventures, and charms them into revealing how they share everything, including their vast fortune, equally. They even invite him over several times more. Vic enchants his set of wealthy Blair sisters as well. The tow truck driver arrives, and it's time for Vic to leave. The Blairs would like to see him again, too. As the Blairs become less reclusive and get to know Ed and Vic, they fall in love with him. So deeply in love with him, they wish there were two of him. Ed sits in his hotel room, planning to ask one of the sisters to marry him. But he realizes this will only allow him half of their fortune. His greed knows no bounds, as he makes up a fake twin brother. He tells the sisters that he and his brother alternate months in South Africa to look after some investments. 
The sisters are thrilled to meet Ed's twin. Days later, the Blair sisters at last meet Alfonso King. Amy and Susan are just as captivated and excited. Twin brothers mean they each get to have one. A month later, Ed asks Amy to marry him. The two are wed shortly after and live happily. Susan wonders if Alfonso will propose to her, and Amy is sure he will. Sure enough, Alfonso returns and asks Susan to be his wife. Vic speaks to April and June separately, expressing his love for them. He also learns a little more about their personalities. We never needed to go out before Daddy died. We fought over him constantly, but now we have each other. You two are pretty close, aren't you? Inseparable. Until now. She seems sweet. Oh, she is. Unless you cross her. Come again? Well, I mean, everyone has a dark side, don't they? He's got the Blair sisters where he wants them, but he knows they have equal say about their inherited fortune. To get his hand on all the money, he has to marry both of them. He also makes up an abroad twin brother, Jack. Vic leaves for business, and Jack introduces himself to the Blairs. It is no time before April and June are married to Vic and Jack. Bingo! Now both sisters are happily married, but are disappointed that their husbands can never be around at the same time. Ed successfully pulls off the charade for months, taking trips to South Africa. He buys a tanning lamp in order to keep up the appearance. And one day, as he naps under the light, the wind from the window brushes his robe sash across his back, leaving a distinct tan line. Vic's tan line occurs when he's out by the pool. Alfonso returns from Africa, and Susan notices a humorous tan line on his back. The sisters gossip about their husbands and find out they both have the exact same tan line. The two have a laugh, followed by a realization. They must know if they are married to the same man. As Vic showers, the sisters search his luggage, finding the fake ponytail he uses for his guise as Jack. The night before Alfonso leaves for Africa, Susan bleaches a small patch of his hair. A week later, Edwin returns, and to the sisters' shock, sports the exact same patch of bleached hair as Alfonso. Susan and Amy's husbands are the same man. They will make him pay for what he did to them. Vic gets out of the shower, and the sisters leave a little surprise for him to find. Twins acquitted a father's death by juvenile court. You got to be fucking kidding. Vic wakes up tied to a bed, his wives standing above him. The sisters share everything. There are two of them, but only one husband. With the help of an axe and a chainsaw, they split their beloved right down the middle. The comic for Split Personality serves as an excellent outline for the episode. Ed gets what's coming to him, and the siblings' sharing is taken to a whole new level. Tales from the Crypt executive producer Joel Silver is clearly having fun with his turn in the director's chair, from the cameos in the beginning to the sisters' costume choice at the end. Joe Pesci is given a chance to be a more sleazy kind of nefarious, instead of the usual hot-headed gangster we all know him to play. I think the biggest difference between the two versions are the Blair sisters themselves. In the comic, they seem nice and naive, but even they have their limits. In the show, the Blairs act very choreographed in the way they speak and move. As an audience member, I think we all see right away that something isn't right with them, and are just waiting for their homicidal past to be known. Perfect casting. Too bad Vic couldn't watch his own episode. He could have avoided getting the splits.